Hey, what's good, everybody? It's Touchdowns and Tangents, live from the Good News Radio Station, Thursday night spot for NFL Takes, Topical Tangents. I'm Pete D. Camarillo. I'm Kenneth Frank James Berry. And I'm Ryan Andrew Mancini. Uh, that's not usually how we introduce people, but okay, if you don't want an introduction, that's fine. I mean, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, shout out to Ryan. He's one of our friends. He's also a journalist, fellow alumni, colleague, listener of the show. He's pulled up on us before, and yeah. He was at the 100th episode. Part of the Sundial, uh, lineage. Sundial legend. Ta- lineage. Ta- ta- talking to the mic, fam. Sundial lineage. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And yeah, so we know we're a little late, but it's all good. NBA Finals is on. So Golden State Warriors won't foul. What ain't, the f- ain't, ain't nobody trying to listen to us right now. Anyways, over these next 18 seconds, shout out to my computer for freezing at this very moment. Why, God? Not in East Oakland. Why? To close out the building. Why do this to me? But on that note, man. <sighs> I'm sick. We had a guest scheduled. He had an audible. Came down to a situation with his kids, man. But shout out to him. We'll get him on sooner rather than later. We've literally been trying to get him on for like a month. But it's all good, man. We got Ryan Mancini in the house. Go to State got the ball. This is wild. Our official touchdowns and tangents, political correspondent. I feel like you need a drop for that. <laughs> what, what drop should I hit? I'm just going to hit the ad. Hold a doorbell? On. Yeah, hit the ad. I'm going to hit that. Hey, you out there. You want some culturally concise commentary? You want some co-hosts who actually are authentic and real? And you can tell that they actually have some type of chemistry going on? You hate cloud chasing? That's cool. I actually got uh, something in mind for you. So keep listening. You'll find out. This is Touchdowns and Tangents, your weekly spot for NFL takes, culturally concise tangents, and context for the culture. Yeah, man. Shout out to the X Squad. Shout out to FBC Radio. Shout out to your favorite podcast app. Shout out to those of you who listen, who review, who actually pull up. But on that note, First topic we got to address, number one topic of the night, the Raiders on Hard Knocks. It's official. We've been talking about it leading up to the past few weeks. So, Kenny, as a resident East Oakland native in the house right now, since Serve is not in right now. First off, I'm older than Serve, I think. So, yeah, I'm the resident East Oakland native regardless. But, yeah, Kenny, Hard Knocks in Oakland – Final season, how do you feel? Sir, sir, I'm late Speak. Ass. No, I'm just playing. Well, you just going to take this man's seat? Oh, I took your seat? Okay. Damn. <laughs> Damn, was Damn, that Damn, okay. Wait, Damn. oh shit, did he make it? Oh, no, no. Fuck, they lost. Wait, nope, they got the ball back. Never mind, I'll take that back. Man, this game got me stressed because I don't want to see Toronto win a title in Oakland. That's just nasty. But anyway, with the Raiders, it was just perfect. Like, who else was it going to be? Does like, that make it right? It doesn't, but who else was it going to be? Like, the fact that you might have the best hairline this week, like, it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not even really accurate. <laughs> but you, yours has yours looks really good for the first time in a while. Speaking so of Oakland, man, sh- shout out to Bruce Always right, Mr. Shias right for putting us on the garage in Culver City. There That's where we just came from. Uh, we're watching the game saying, over there. That's why to, we're late. Shout out to the girl saying you got really nice shirts and you're doing nothing to follow up about it. I did not you, Pete, but just in general. Shout out to you stumbling into your your long lost pops in the Argyle sweater. <laughs> First off, <laughs> the fat he, the, fa- he, the fat black dude <laughs> with the glasses was the Argyle. <laughs> not. My <laughs> father, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> but, yeah, man, I just think it's messed up because the Raiders already have enough drama going on right now. I can give you Incognito. I can give you Antonio Brown. I can give you Vontez Perfect, John Gruden, Mike Mayock. My, uh, uh, like, the cable. perfect storm is great Tom to cable. watch, but, like, it's actually still a storm. Like, People are still living through a chaos, including Raider Nation. Like, hasn't Raider Nation suffered enough? 
Like, why do you have to put us on a national scale to watch our team combust and bleed out? Like a Lincoln Park song? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's for the culture vultures of HBO Hard Knocks. Bro, they've been talking about HBO Hard Knocks getting canceled for, like, at least three years because, one, it's unnecessary. We already see inside every single person's training camp based on all their PR highlight videos every other day. And a lot of teams just don't want to be on it because it's a distraction. It's a comp- and it's a competitive disadvantage because you're giving up your calls, you're giving up your scouting, like, you're giving up plays, like, you're giving up a lot. And for the Raiders to do that, especially in their last season of Oakland, a season where they desperately need to win, a season when they desperately need to pay back their fans who loved and supported them through basically 20 years of mediocrity, Man. and that's how you reward them with hard knocks, like... This season is for Oakland. This season isn't about HBO. It isn't about a national audience. It isn't about the drama that is ESPN. And honestly, as we've said on the show many times, like mainstream media has never shown love for the Raiders. So I don't expect that to change just because they're on hard knocks. And honestly, I will probably watch only because people are going to make me watch. Like I'm going to be watching adjacent because people are going to be tagging me and stuff and all that sort so yeah man toronto just won the, the- hey! riverside won a fucking ring let's go the ie boy the 951 boy martin luther king mo the 909 the ie is on man fuck reggie miller it's Kawhi leonard Fuck Cheryl Miller. Kawhi the GOAT Leonard. Cheryl Miller will shoot you in the face. First off, don't talk shit about Cheryl Miller. She'll pull up on you. All I'm saying is... There's some WNBA players who will pull up on you. Don't don't be playing that shit. All I'm saying is Kawhi's the greatest player in Riverside history now. Pete speaks for himself and only Two rings himself. and two different teams. He would... And he beat two of the greatest teams ever? Are you kidding me? I just wanna- He beat the Warriors and the Heat? Two of the Clay greatest Thompson, dynasties ever, bro. Clay Thompson was intentionally fouled and knocked out of the game. Midway. Okay. So we're talking about 90s basketball. Intentionally sure. fouled. We got it. And had his ankle and knee messed up. Clay Thompson. Kawhi Bryant Jordan, man. They and won a ring. To be perfectly honest, I don't see how Golden State didn't get the ball. I, I really don't know what just happened. I don't know how they how they went from Golden State supposedly winning. The jump ball to Toronto so shooting free throws because they're doing because re- they don't re- believe it. They're doing replays and they don't believe that they just won a title. It's like, but yeah, I'm man. happy. I'm happy for Toronto though. But again, the six is, Drake. I'm, I'm just Vince I'm Carter. Dis- I'm disgusted because yet again Oakland takes another loss to East Oakland because they're moving across the pond to Palm Ass San Francisco. And then you have... And that's what the Warriors gave him. Three L's at Oracle in a row. In a row. No three L's, L's in no Oracle. Wins. They got a gentleman sweep down there. The fact that Kyle Lowry... Wait, is the game not over? He's as confused as I am. It's supposed to be .9 seconds left, but for some reason... What is going on? This is fucking weird. The NBA's like, damn, how can we rig this in Golden State's favor? <laughs> yeah, you probably messed that up like when you didn't the give them the ball arriving, with .9 or? seconds left. Okay, this and is you weird. You gave them a free throw, and then you gave Toronto the ball because somebody got a tech. I don't know how you call a tech at the end of the game on the other team. I'm so confused. Okay, well, premature Pete strikes again. I mean, I literally just celebrated. I'm really mad. Like, I literally just let out all my emotions. Like, I have no more emotion. Service over there is laughing. Service dude. apoplectic I'm right hot. now. <laughs> I'm so hot right now. And uh, even like, even if they win, they're not going to feel the same. Uh, it's going to have energy to be hot right now. Like, like, how is he getting another free throw? I don't understand this. Because they're trying to rig it and mess up the spread and fan duel points. I don't understand what's going on right now. Why is he giving more free throws? I don't know, man. This is why we need sound and or subtitles. I don't understand. (laughs) Like, what was the point? I wouldn't even, like, it's over. Okay, now it's officially over. We're good. Don't turn that up. We're good. 
Don't We're good. The game is over. Officially, Riverside is on. Shout out to the IE. Kawhi's probably going to leave. At that point, just leave. You were stressed there for a minute. Now. I really was. I didn't know what right. the hell was, was going on. He was mad pressed. Oh, I was, uh, I was like, man. You don't know how many times I've celebrated. And then Kawhi didn't even like you in high school, bro, because we the same age. Nah, he's like two years older he's than 27. me. He's 27. Nah, he's a, he's a little bit older. He's 27. He's like one year older than me, though. Fam, you're 27. But he's like a grade older than me. Okay, but we're both okay. Fine. He's they won a state championship like my junior year. So he's twenty eight. Whatever. We're, he's like a year older than you. Anyways. Uh, just type in Leonard. Manson. Anyways, back to the Raiders, man. That's Car- gross that they won a championship to close out that building. Like Golden State should be ashamed of themselves. But shout out to Marcus Hall for finally getting the ring. But anyway, this is a football podcast. We're gonna talk about football the rest of the way. And get these jokes off. Um, And maybe some politics. Yang gang. I hate you both both equally and collectively. I hate you both equally and collectively. I didn't say it. (laughs) Doesn't matter. Hey, so. Talk to the mic. Other Raider notes, man. Carl Joseph says he wants to be a Raider for life. Every time John Gruden looks at Carl Joseph, he realizes he could have been Chris Jones. That they just reached at 14 and drafted Chris Jones. Think about that. I think Carl Joseph is already about to lose his job to Abram. Abram and it's Joseph are in the up. same position. It are, it's already they're building the up same, that they way. Do the, they have the same skill set. But they're not. They're starting beside each other at the moment. Which is the problem. If you have two safeties who do the same thing, you really only have one safety who does the same thing. And then you loop in little-ass LaMarcus Joyner. Like, LaMarcus Joyner is a worse option than Carl Joseph. Because Demarcus Jordan ain't smacking nobody. Yeah, he's for sure. He's not out here getting picks. For sure. He's five nine, getting hawked by Titus. <laughs> getting hawked by Titus. <laughs> getting hawked, like getting Toronto Raptors in the Super Bowl by Gronkowski uh, and back up tight ends. And your boy Arden Key said he put on fifteen pounds since OTAs. They said he's up to two sixty from two forty five, which was like literally like a month ago. Which feels like a lie, but whatever. Either it's a that. lie or he's on that Julian Edelman. That Julian Edelman Rice diet. That Julian Edelman PEDs, boy. Yeah, and rice, sorry, eating that much eating a bunch of rice still isn't even if you ate meals of rice a day, still isn't. That's that, that that's weight. that back when your high school football coach is like, eat a peanut butter sandwich and milk every night before you with go the, to sleep. With a banana. Like fam, I'm saying. Fam, still you're growing. giving me diabetes. And all types of, and you're supporting the dairy industry you're and me, big agriculture. You're giving me 20 pounds of fat I'm going to have to run <laughs> off in the summer. And then you're going to, yeah. it happened to me because I was like 200 pounds. I was like 198 my freshman year after I lost 80 pounds. And hey, you think our high school coaches got a check from Big Ag? Nah. <laughs> they probably got a stipend from farmers. Loki, I wanted to fight, <laughs> I wanted to fight my coach at one point because he gave uh, I mean, most of the high school football coaches. Oh, hey, you're here. Oh, yeah, oh, wow. here. Oh, you want to oh, introduce yourself? Oh, oh. How you, you want to introduce yourself? Oh. How, How you, you like? doing? What's good? Hi, guys. <laughs> you still think Le'Veon like Bell's a sucker? Oh. I'm kidding. No, like Don't. I was saying, you know, most Are of the Are you hi- sipping on an horchata? Yes. Like, what's good? Uh, horchata? Shout out to a PM. All their drinks. Uh, fountain drinks are 87 cents, any size. What's and up? I didn't realize All that summer? the horchata, like. That's how we know you're a pothead. You pull up with a big drink. With horchata. Because <laughs> you didn't want to get coffee, so you got horchata. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want to have cotton mouth while I was talking, so. <laughs> it's it's all good. Your voice sounds nice. Oh, thank you. Nice to hear you. But, yeah, man. Anything else before we move on from the bum ass Raiders? <sighs> Antonio Brown's probably going to be the last highlight. They're going to do some stuff on Max Crosby. Uh, John Green's going to sound really weird. Um, what's his face? Mike Mayock. They're gonna do a bunch of reels with just him saying "bubble button," being fascinated with grown men's asses. <laughs> um, sus. That, that's mad sus, by the way. That's eyes wide shut, sus. But um, <laughs> that's what it's gonna sound like when, every time they talk about uh, bubble butts. Mike Mayock. Wow. After every segment, he's gonna be like, "Oh man," but you know who has a big butt? Jelly. Jelly's a big old butt, man. It's going to be weird. I'm telling you, it's going to be a weird-ass clip of them.